Daniel, take it yeah. away because you got a story for the people. Okay, so this is a very fascinating story. I wish friend of the show, Joe Rogan, one day we'll get there, uh, <laughs> has a uh, has a very big podcast. Some might say if you follow statistics and math, it's the biggest podcast in the U.S. The most successful, I think. The most worldwide. successful. I, I don't know. I'm sure that somewhere in China there's something that's bigger. That's just my guess. But All right, we'll see. I don't, I don't have those numbers in front of me, so I can't guess anything else. Yeah. Anyway, so Joe Rogan is a guy that most people really like. A few people really don't like. And I think a lot of that has to do with Joe Rogan just happened to be more influential than mainstream news is and has a different perspective that they don't like because it can be controlled. And he's just an every guy. He's basically represents, in a sense, independence in a very large degree. If you remember, we covered a while back. He did a sort of an uh, endorsement of Bernie Sanders where he said he would vote for him. And then everyone freaked out. And then a lot of people are like, Bernie Sanders, you terrible, 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 terrible person. You retweeted that. And that's horrible and disgusting. And we will never support you, even though we never did. And we wouldn't have. And our candidate wanted to get on the show. And he said, no, because I want to remind everyone, all the people that are currently complaining about what I'm about to read are the same people. So Biden tried to get on Joe Rogan's show. And he said, no. Elizabeth Warren tried to get on Joe Rogan's show. And he said, no. I think it was Beto O'Rourke tried to get on Joe Rogan's show, and he said no. And then Bernie Sanders got on. So all of a sudden, after that happened in that order, uh, Joe Rogan's a terrible person because he wouldn't bend the knee, I suppose. So uh, there's been a development, and we're going to read about it. And if you followed the show, no one should be surprised by this. So the podcast host, Joe Rogan, said he will vote for Donald Trump over Joe Biden in the presidential election. By the way, if you saw the podcast in question with uh, Eric Weinstein. Like that section was one of the most like throwaway parts of the show where he's literally like, and they'll get into a little bit. He's like, they're like talking about a bunch of stuff and they're talking about how terrible the government is and how terrible the choices are between uh, the two candidates. And they're both really bad choices. And then uh, Biden's, uh, uh, Joe's basically like, well, at least Trump is, hasn't lost his mind. And that was basically the extent of it. But, of course, the mainstream media has to go absolute ape after this. So uh, should the former vice president be the Democratic nominee? And uh, so Rogan, who has endorsed Bernie Sanders, said the party has uh, had made morons out of voters by appearing to favor Biden. Rather, uh, I'd rather vote for Biden, uh, Trump than Biden. That was basically the entire quote. Uh, I don't think Biden can handle anything. They're relying effectively on it, on his cabinet, which is literally what we've said here on the show, that if you have Trump or Biden, you're really picking their cabinets to run things, which is just what we've said. So if you want to talk about an individual leader who can communicate, he can't do that, which we've also said on the show. And we don't know what the F he'll be like after a year in office. The pressure of being president of the United States is something that no one is prepared for. The only one who seems to be doing fine with it is Trump, oddly enough. Sanders, who took an early lead in the delegate count before losing a string of contests to Biden, is a year older than the former VP, which they're trying, again, they're just trying to tie these things together. When the point that Joe Rogan's made, he's been consistent for like half a year. Anyway, Sanders has been insanely consistent there you go, his entire life, Joe Rogan said in January, unveiling his endorsement, even though it wasn't technically an endorsement, even though it kind of was. Details of the independent Vermont senator, a self-described Democratic socialist. Always got to throw that in there. If you mention Bernie Sanders, no one ever goes Joe Biden, a self-described uh, capitalist Democrat. No, but with, with Bernie Sanders, it's always got to make sure you throw in that socialist uh, quote. He's basically been saying the same thing for the same uh, for the same thing for his whole life. And that in the end of a very powerful structure to operate from Joe Rogan made his controversial stake has made many controversial statements because remember it wasn't controversial. Joe Rogan was not controversial until he didn't play ball with the Joe Biden campaign. Then we get these type of things that come out of it. In uh, January, the president of the human rights campaign said then Sanders should reconsider accepting Joe Rogan's endorsement because the podcaster has attacked transgender people, gay men, women, and color, and countless marginalized groups at every opportunity, which is absolute horseshit. I mean, it's just, here's the distinction that's made. You have one group of people that want power that are attacked to another group of people at mainstream media, and then you have Joe Rogan, who thinks his own thoughts, who hasn't gone after groups. This is made up. This is the thing that keeps sticking with him because, hey, Joe Rogan 
He's not with us, so we have to kick him out. We have to kick him out. He is a right winger. He's alt right. Oh, he has right adjacent people, even though he's had lefties on, even though he's basically considers himself a progressive on most issues. He's a right winger because we can't control him and he's powerful and we must alienate him. Although he does seem to have the strongest podcast in the world. It's sort of like if Joe Rogan was his own news station uh, that was like the size of Fox and like MSN and CNN were like, we're not associating with these guys. Anyway, my point is that they're making this stuff up about him. And it's basically like, you've seen Joe Rogan. He has like 1,500 videos that are like three hours each. And they have like two quotes that are po- only problematic if you don't have context. So I'm, I'm going to continue with the article, though. A Sanders spokeswoman said, uh, sh- quote, sharing a big tent. And by the way, they were trying to use uh, uh, his support to attack Sanders. So it's all politics to begin with. Sharing a big tent requires including those who do not share every one of our beliefs while always making clear that we'll never compromise on our values. Writing for The Guardian, Jacobin Ma- Magazine editor uh, said that Rogan's endorsement was the best endorsement Bernie Sanders could hope for as Rogan's uh, fans are a group of people who can't afford to cede to Trump. So here's the big thing that we get out of this. This is the big takeaway. I don't get how stupid they could possibly be to think that it's a good idea to attack Joe Rogan if they believe anything that they say they believe. Because Joe Rogan controls a huge amount of people that are not very politically inclined that are spread all the way from socialism to far right. Let's be real. He has a wide audience of regular American people, people outside of America. So you know what you don't want to do? You know what what you want? You want someone, even if you find them problematic, which I think is just politics run amok in its own way to think the things that people say about them that aren't true. They just go, oh, he's a bald guy that's buff. He must be right wing. Uh, And there's very much high judgment in that. But Joe Rogan, you want him because if you follow your own logic and say, oh, he's very Trump adjacent, very right wing. Isn't that doesn't that mean you want to do anything you can to get him on your side? So that his people don't vote for Trump. Because no. what this shows is that he voted, he wanted to vote for Sanders. And now that Sanders is out of the race, which is something we said would happen here on the show, he's now going, well, I would prefer Trump over uh, Biden. So what you've effectively done is you've taken Sanders, the person who we have said for a long time can pull independence away from Trump. And we're like, God, look. We have Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's proof of this. Well, Joe Rogan said these things that are possibly bad if you look at them from a very specific viewpoint. It's not even real. So screw Joe Rogan. And now that Joe Rogan is going and saying, hey, if I have to choose between Biden and Trump, I'm going to choose Trump. They're saying, look at it. We called it. He was a right winger. We could have had it. We could have had his audience. But no, it's uh, nothing's Joe Biden's fault. Nothing can be Joe Biden's fault. It's all your fault, guys. So here's what I'm looking at. I think because, Daniel, you kind of nailed everything down already. Um, I'm not going to vote for Biden. And this is my decision. I'm a huge fan of Joe Rogan. I subscribe to his channel. Uh, I do watch his content a lot. Uh, Joe Rogan is not a right winger. He is not a left winger. He is independent. He has his own thoughts. He has said that not once, not twice, but a million times on his show. He has all types of guests on his show. And... You know what, corporate media, there's a reason why people are leaving, you know, establishment media, television, and going to uh, online sources because no one trusts those old institutions. And at least Joe Rogan's going to call it how he sees it, okay? And he has his opinion. And are there things that he says that I don't agree with? Absolutely. But the guy knows how to have a good show. And you know what? He's not a horrible person the way the establishment wants to make it seem out. Make, you basically want to show him how he's like a horrible person. He's not. He's not a horrible person. He's a good person, and he's done a lot of good things on his show. So let's look at our choices. Right now, again, there's no nominee yet because no one has reached the threshold. There's Joe Biden, which corporate media seems to be anointing, and then there's Bernie Sanders. Um, Let's look at uh, Joe Biden's uh, presentation of of himself, especially online with his uh, quote-unquote town halls that are like all the rage. Um, the man's all over the place. He doesn't have a single cog- uh, cognitive thought. He is um, clearly uh, being medicated or something like that. Or some- He has handlers to take care of him to make him look presentable. But even then, he can't do it. And this guy will be eaten alive by Trump. 
but yet the establishment seems to have those rose colored glasses on of the Obama years. And basically they're going to think that, Oh, well, yeah, because Trump's such a bad guy because the establishment media and the vote blue, no matter who have their, uh, you know, Trump derangement syndrome. Well then, you know, everyone's going to fall in line. That's not how it works. Cause people respond to strengths. People respond to, respond to good ideas. Bernie Sanders has been consistent with his policies for 40 plus years. Joe Biden uh, voted against desegregation. Joe Biden um, helped out the credit card corporations. Joe Biden has not won, but eight accusations of sexual assault, sexual abuse, and harassment on him. But yet somehow this is the, 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 the champion for the Democratic Party. Uh, the general election will be a disaster if Biden's the nominee. And so when Joe Rogan says, I'd rather vote for Trump than Joe Biden, I have to look at it and say, yeah, I understand that. Because at least Trump has some functioning brain cells, which isn't saying a lot. But compared to Joe Biden, Trump's a, a scholar, an Ivy League scholar at that. Jeff. Wow. Uh, <laughs> you said people, he has handlers that make him look good. Yeah. Uh, uh, how they get paid. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that's a good job for them. Uh, it's my job to make this guy look good. Uh, you're failing at that job. Uh, it, it, you're basically seeing 2016 play out again in real time. I mean, th this is what they're talking. And, and the Joe Rogan, as Daniel said, it's it's the experiment. They always want. Well, we need to get the independent independence away from Trump. These people that supported Bernie but voted for Trump, we need to get those guys back. So we're gonna get Hillary, but without hair. That's basically what we're doing right now. Uh, <laughs> because maybe that was the problem. It was a it was a girl, and we need a guy now, right? Is that it? No, they, they've shown con consistency that he he beats Trump every time in in these uh, polls they do. But they don't want him. Instead, they they have had have attacked him in the news. I mean, they as Venezuela again. They talk about Venezuela with him so many times. You think he had stock in that country, like he grew up there or something? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, again, too, it's it's also more than. Uh, he's a very funny comedian. Uh, I I may not disagree. I may disagree with some of his uh, uh, thoughts. But he is an independent yeah. thinker. He goes outside the box. Um, so, yeah, I, mean, I personally can't vote for Biden myself either. I mean, it's – it's. I'm, dang, I really think I'm probably going to just get drunk that day. It's like Biden <laughs> or Trump, it's like which foot do you want to get shot in? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow Gray Walker uh, – uh, example and vote third party that's that's my pathway to have a clear conscience on that day and you know what i did it in 2016 and i'll do it again and however the rest well, of the team also, chooses to vote go ahead go go vote however you want and here's the other thing about all this that that we, go ahead go ahead jeff sorry uh, i mean i'm still gonna uh, vote because there's still uh, local stuff you can vote for in that time mm -hmm. uh, so even if you don't want to vote for either one of those as president, or even if you don't want to vote a third party, you just don't want to vote for that at all. Still, I don't want it to disenfranchise people to school elections. Cause even if you don't want to vote for the president, you are still can vote yeah. on stuff that impacts you in your community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I do right. agree. And that's a, that's a real good point because again, there's a lot of things that will be on the ballot and a lot of things that uh, we should participate in because, you know, there are good candidates, especially at the local level, uh, that can bring in change to your community. I mean, like, for example, during the municipal election cycle, I uh, voted for the progressive aldermanic candidate that was going against the establishment guy, and I believe that he had a better vision. You know what? Grant, he didn't win because this is Cook County, Illinois, Chicago. But a number of them did. Yeah, yeah but a number mm -hmm. of them did win, and we interviewed them, and they were on our show. So there we go. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, the thing is, too, is so – I can't I can't blame Joe Rogan for not wanting to vote for Biden, right? Like I'm not I'm not saying I'm all for him wanting to vote for Trump either. I'm that's not what I'm saying at all. But but I can understand when someone says that you wouldn't vote for Biden, I'd be like, "Yeah, I get it." I get it. I mean, let's I mean, yes, we can we can go down the laundry list. I mean, Kit has has named that laundry list of things that Biden has done that he is not popular for, you know, um with the wars and just everything. I mean, we can go down that route or we can also go, go down the other route of he's he's not all there, right? Nobody has nobody has 
given the medical note that, you know, he has this or that, but it's, it's kind of obvious. And if you can't see that, then I don't think you're watching Joe Biden enough. Um, maybe in, in, and, and I think maybe there's a lot of that populace who isn't as political and in their heads, they're just like, well, he was Obama's VP. So he, he must be the, the right candidate to pick. And, uh, again, th this is also where I think either not enough information is being put out or there's just misinformation, which is what we always find. There's always this weird spin, this weird narrative where the real truth does not come out. And then everybody's heads are just, when you say things like that, it just makes them go insane. Like, how could you not, how, why would you do that? And, and, and again, this is why it's so important that the facts are out there, that the information's out there. And I, I, I just, I just hope that eventually we can get to a point where we stop playing this weird narrative of, you know, let's let's uh, let's vote blue no matter who. It's like why 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 are you not taking a look at who you're voting? Like, would you let a random person just come in your home just because they're on they're a friend of a friend or something? That doesn't make any sense to me. Absolutely and, not. You don't come to this house unless you're invited. All right, and that's that's my <laughs> ground rule. <laughs> And so here's, here's another here's another big thing that we have to talk about with this really, and then that is that the conversation, the way the media is covering this entire event, they're acting as if, uh, like, like a, a a Joe put on like a MAGA hat and said, "I'm with Trump." That's what all the reporting seems to be showing, or they're trying to make it seem like that's what he said. When in reality, I saw the podcast before the news even came out about this, and it was basically they're like, "Well." Trump's a really terrible president, isn't he? Oh, yeah, no, he's a really terrible president. Biden's a really terrible candidate, isn't he? Oh, yeah, he's a really terrible candidate. If you had to choose between one, um, I guess I'll go with the guy who hasn't lost his mind. That was basically the tone that they were using. And I want to remind everyone, in an alternate universe, where Joe Rogan, from the beginning, had Joe Biden on the show, made him look good, and now, at this point in time, said, I'm going to pick Joe Biden... Do you know what mainstream media is saying about Joe Rogan? Are they saying Joe Rogan's a bad guy? Are they saying Joe Rogan is at any opportunity making fun of every possible minority group? Or are they possibly in the universe saying, I like Joe Rogan. I like the views he has. He's an independent thinker. And he we don't always agree with him on everything, but he comes down on the right uh, hand at the end. I think in that universe, the news likes Joe Rogan. Right. They just don't for political reasons. And and there's another thing too, and this is kind of maybe it's it, it's what I'm going to say isn't maybe entirely for every single person, but people respond to strengths. People respond to somebody who at least has a plan and is somewhat organized. Now Trump, however horribly he is, um does have some ability to when he says, "Hey, this is my plan, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it." However horrible it is, um, at least he has filed to Joe Biden. He doesn't know which way he's going and people don't respond to a person like that to be their leader. People don't respond or follow or fall in line with a person like that. And you know what Joe Rogan saying, Hey, I'd rather vote for Trump than Biden. There's a lot of people who would think that and say like, yeah, and there's nothing wrong with thinking that because it's human nature to respond. It's to up strength. to the it, Democrats yeah, to get yeah. them to change their mind. Yeah. And, and also I, I want to, real, to say real quick, Jeff, you had a final point you wanted to mention too, real quick. Oh, I mean, I was just going to point out the fact that the, how they're treating, but they're treating him basically Biden like he's the guy, even though right. the election is not over yet, which is fascinating, mm -hmm. but they, they, they're, they're giving him the easiest level ever. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's like playing, uh, they ever taken uh, kids to go bowling and they put those little things in the aisles so that the ball will go down there? That's what they're doing to Biden. Like, if he remembers to wear pants, they'll be like, look, Joe's the leader. He wore pants today. He remembered that. He's our guy. You know, it's it, – and, and yet they'll attack Bernie with the same talking points that have been obliterated 100 times over. But they keep bringing it up because they want to hammer on this whole idea that he wants to take away your private insurance company. Like, that's a bad thing. I would be happy if he took it away. That's mm -hmm. like saying this monkey on my back that keeps hitting me over the head with a hammer. He's going <laughs> to take that away from me. That's a good thing. <laughs> and that's going to be your final note on that one. That's, that's a good point.